So last night, the Bucks lose game one against the Phoenix Suns, and now you're hearing sweep. This always happens. This always happens in a championship series, whether it's MLB, NBA, right? Or the, you know, wait, not NFL. It's only one game. But when you have a series, right, the pendulum swings so much over one game. We overreact every time over one game, right? This is going to be a hard fought series, okay? The Suns are not a way superior team to the Milwaukee Bucks. As a matter of fact, after watching the game last night, I'm more encouraged that the Bucks can win this series. I actually look at last night's game differently, right? Differently than what you're hearing in the media, because apparently the Suns have already won the championship, right? I don't believe this at all, okay? Remember, the Bucks played against Miami. They swept them. That was big because that was a mental barrier, right? Miami had eliminated them from the playoffs, okay? So that was a big step for the Bucks. Then against the Nets, they go down 0-2. Everyone's saying it's over. What happened? Milwaukee came back. They won four of the next five. Okay, then against the Hawks, right? They lose game one at home. Okay, everyone's talking up, you know, about Trey Young and Collins and Clint Capella, right? What happened? Next four or five games, the Bucks win them. Uh, close out that series in six games. Okay, so the Bucks have proven they can overcome adversity. The Bucks have proven they have character. Okay, the Milwaukee Bucks have proven they can make adjustments and they can overcome a loss. So why everyone's talking a sweep, I don't know. If the Brooklyn Nets didn't sweep the Bucks, I can tell you right now the Phoenix Suns are not going to sweep uh, the Bucks. And I don't want to hear about injuries. Okay. I saw LeBron James win championships off of injuries. I saw Kawhi Leonard, you know, win a championship off of injuries when the Warriors suffered injuries. I've seen a bunch of superstars win championships off of injuries. We don't discount them. So you don't get to discount the Milwaukee Bucks or the Suns if they win a championship. I don't believe in doing that to teams, right? Uh, injuries are part of the game. But when I look at the game last night, okay, Milwaukee shot the ball better from three-point line. Okay, they were 16 at 36. The Suns were 11 at 34. So Milwaukee shot 44% from behind the arc. The Suns shot 32%. Okay. Uh, they, they were uh, pretty much uh, a wash from the field. Okay, I think the Suns had one more basket. So Milwaukee shot the ball better pretty much for the game. You're saying, well, how'd the Suns win? Free throw line. The Suns shot more free throws than Milwaukee. Okay, as a matter of fact, several times last night, the Suns got bailed out from bad shots. Devin Booker took a bunch of bad shots. Matter of fact, there were a few of those Suns players that took bad shots, but they got to the free throw line. Not implying that the refs gave the Suns the game. I'm just saying that's an adjustment that can be made. Milwaukee can make that adjustment, right? They can not put the Suns on the free throw line, right? So that's something that can be fixed. So Milwaukee shot the ball better. They actually didn't play as bad defense as everyone is saying. They played bad defense against Chris Paul. Why Brooke Lopez is covering Chris Paul, I don't know. But that's an adjustment that can be made. And let's not forget, Milwaukee has Drew Holiday an all-NBA first-team defender. That's an adjustment that can be made. That's why it's a series, okay? That's what happens in series. When you play a seven-game series, teams make adjustments. They play each other. Milwaukee got caught, but I also think it's kind of their team thing. They just always come out flat the first game of the series. With the exception of Miami, they just always come out flat. But the second game, they always come back strong. You know, I like Milwaukee in game two of the NBA Finals. I think Milwaukee is going to win that game straight up. They're going to make the adjustments on Chris Paul. Brooke Lopez will not be covering Chris Paul. It'll probably be Drew. And they're going to find a way to deal with the high screen pick and roll, right? They're, in other words, they'll make the adjustments and they'll come back and they'll win this game. Here's one thing about the Bucks, though. I feel like Giannis, I was hoping for this when he was injured that he would step back and see how good this team plays when he's not there. Now, I am not of the opinion that the Bucs are better without Giannis. That's just stupid. Okay, Giannis is too good of a player. The Bucs are not better without Giannis. But when you have a player like Giannis, who's as dominant as he is, and the team appears to be better when he's not on the floor, that's usually a sign of bad coaching. You're not using your players correctly, okay? Uh, you're not coaching Giannis correctly to come in there and play with this team right. For instance, when Giannis shoots three-pointers, last night he went one of two. That's still not a good sign. Even when he's making them, that's not a good sign. Because when he makes them, 
he's going to be less aggressive in the fourth quarter. He's going to be more inclined to take a shot where the percentages are not in his favor. Remember, the Suns want Giannis to take that shot. They even want him to make them the first three quarters because in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line, they want Giannis to feel comfortable, step back, and take that shot because they're playing the percentages, right? They know overall he is not a good three-point shooter. So they don't want the Giannis that drives to the hole. They don't want the Giannis that takes it to the rim. They want the Giannis that shoots the three-point shot. So even when he's making them, I'm not a fan of it because it sets a bad tone. Not only that, the other thing I don't like is when Giannis dribbles the ball up the court. That should be Drew Holiday or Chris Middleton, right? I don't like it. It just seems like the whole team gets out of sync. And I was hoping that when Giannis sat down, he would have spotted these things, right? Kind of figured out, okay, I need to make this adjustment and that adjustment and, and find a way to use my dominant talent where I highlight the talent of others around me, okay? But that didn't happen in game one. But this team has already proven that they have a high basketball IQ. They can make adjustments and they can come back and they can fix it, you know, uh, uh, in, in a series. And that's what I expect the Bucks do. They're going to figure out how to defend Chris Paul properly. They're going to figure out how to get Drew Holiday more involved, right? And Giannis is going to figure out his niche on how to uh, uh, find his place in this team, in this particular series, so they can maximize their potential and maximize the talent of one another to win this series. I love the Bucks in game two because I just think they've proven they can do this. And usually when the media goes one way, they're always wrong. Hey everyone, thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.